More on the latest Trump allegations. Chelsea Cooley Altman, Miss USA from 2005, is a Trump supporter, and she has a very different story of her own experience. Chelsea, good morning, or good afternoon. I should say, good to have you with us today. Welcome. Thank you so much for having me. All right, so you, you've known Mr. Trump uh, for 11 years, you say, and you say that he's never, um, never done anything like this to you? I've been Mr. Trump for 11 years. For the past five years, he has been my personal business mentor, and I have been with him in numerous situations, um, on his plane, at events, at charity functions, around the pageant world, and even around his family. And I have never been in a situation where I felt compromised. He has been nothing but completely respectful. So why do you think all these women are coming out, and do you think that they deserve to have their story told? Do they deserve to be believed? I think everybody has a story to tell. Whether or not I believe it is a completely different side of the story. You know, I heard a, a pastor friend of mine say the other day that, you know, God teaches us to love each other, but he doesn't tell us that we have to trust each other. And so allegations are just that. They're allegations. And until proven with irrefutable evidence that it is absolutely fact, I'm not buying into anything until I actually see hard factual information. I think that the Clinton campaign, as well as the media, is doing a really good job at trying to divert the focus off of what we as Americans should be focusing on in any presidential election. It all comes down to policy. And I would love more than anything else to see that become the forefront on everybody's topic of discussion. Yeah. I mean, this, you know, these kind of stories get a ton of attention, um, and they are moving the numbers uh, to some extent. Let's take a look at some of this. Um, here's a poll. Has Donald Trump probably made unwanted sexual advances was the question. 68% believe that he probably has. Here's another one. Donald Trump's treatment of women, is it a legitimate issue? 55% say yes, 42% say no. And, and perhaps some of the reason that you know, some of these women have come out at this point is because of what he said on that original Access Hollywood tape that was so specific. And they claim that it, it mirrored their own experience so you know, so considerably that they decided to come forward. Um, do you have any, any sympathy for that, that argument? You know, what, what was recorded that, that Mr. Trump said, I mean, he's come out and he's apologized for it. I know that I've never said everything perfectly. I don't think any of us have. If, if someone were to dig into our closet, and dig up every single thing that we had ever said or every text that we had ever sent or every post that we've ever, ever posted on Facebook, I don't think any of us would be 100% satisfied with things that we might have said in moments that weren't true reflections of our character. I do not agree with what he said on the open mic tape, but I do appreciate the fact that he took ownership of it. He took responsibility for it, and he has done so in a manner that really all of us could ask for. You know, for me, especially with where we're at right now in the stage of this election, my focus and my, my hope and my prayer for the American people is A, to seek God first, because in doing so, God can lead us to who He can upright and can, can uphold in the presidential um, office. You know, God can use Donald Trump in mighty, mighty ways, just like He has done with many other men in the Bible, Jehu, Samson, you know, that right. may not have been of perfect moral character, but He can use them mightily for His good. I understand, good. I understand and what so you're saying. I'm, and not I think that everybody... the I'm not dismissing the moral character mm -hmm. at all, but I do think that first and foremost, if we set aside policy and throw caution to the wind on that, we're going to have a very different kind of America than what we know our country to be founded on. And I think well, that's what, as Americans, we need to do first. I, I understand what you're saying. And I, I mean, ultimately, everybody will make that decision for themselves when they walk into the ballot box about whether or not they believe these accusations and whether or not they think that it is um, of great importance to them when they go to vote. That's going to be something that people will decide individually. Um, what would you advise him to do in terms of, of making this situation better for himself? What could he do that would change women's minds, do you think? Well, I think, you know, he's always, in any type of situation, 
you know, if someone is coming at you, you want to defend yourself. You want to speak truth. And if you can speak truth and love into any situation, I think that's first and foremost. So I don't think there's anything wrong with him wanting to defend himself because by human nature, we all want to defend ourselves if someone is coming at us falsely um, accusing us of something. At the same time, I am very interested to see how he is going to outline his policy, you know, different things that he is talking about at this upcoming debate, things he's going to do in the first 100 days once he gets into the White, into the White House. You know, those are things that I want to hear and that I know Americans want to hear and that I am praying that the media is going to highlight because at the end of the day, if we do not start focusing and turning our attention on policy as we should with any presidential yeah, debate, yeah. we are going to find ourselves in a complete mess yeah. come November 9th. Well, it'll be interesting to see if the focus turns to that uh, in the remaining days because I hear what you're saying from a lot of people out there um, and I think a lot of people would like to get it back to, to that discussion. Chelsea, thank you very much. Good to have you with us today.